Hallelujah. We want to welcome you to another edition of Worship at His Feet. We thank God Almighty who has kept us alive to see today and want to return all the glory to Him. So we want to welcome everyone, wherever you are watching from. We want you to make a comment on the YouTube channel and say, tell us where you are watching from. Just say hello. I'm watching from this place. I'm watching from that place. Come on, let us type it in. What's your expectation for today's program? We want you to type it in. You can say hello to the other people on the platform. Just say we are welcoming every one of us. It's going to be a glorious time in God's presence today. We want you to be expectant. We are here to worship God. And God is going to accept our worship in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's just start with a opening prayer before we go to a time of worship. Hallelujah. Father, we just want to thank you. We give you all the glory, honor, and adoration. We thank you for keeping us alive to see February, another month in the land of the living in this year, 2022. Father, we exalt your name. Blessed be to your name in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here tonight. We ask that you come and tabernacle with us in the name of Jesus. Let our worship be acceptable unto you, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we are here with our expectations. We ask, O God, that you will meet with us in the mighty name of Jesus. Our lives will be transformed. We will not be the same again in the mighty name of Jesus. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. So we want you to be in the mood of worship right now, even as we begin to exalt the name of the Lord and thank Him for all He has done in our lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we worship you. Thank you. 
Father, we need you, O oh God. We need you. We are tired of using our own human strength and understanding to sort things out. And at the end of the day, we become tired and weary. Lord, we need you. We cry out to you tonight. The Lord, we need you. We need you. We need you. My dear brothers and sisters, wherever you are listening, can you just open your mouth and tell God, Lord, I need you. I need you. If you're expecting tonight for a miracle, I want you to open your mouth and say, Father, I need your divine intervention. I need your miracle in my life. I need your miracle in my home. God is here already, my brothers and sisters. And I don't want you to miss out on what he's doing already. His presence is here with us right now. He's here to heal. He's here to save. He's here to deliver. He's here to set the captives free. Open your mouth and say, Father, I need you, oh God. Let him see that you really, 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 really need him. Maraka Sandelebo Shata. Father, we need you. We need you, oh God. We need you, oh God. We cannot do it our own way, Lord. We are tired of trying to solve the problem ourselves. We need you, oh God. We need you, oh God. We need you, oh God. The presence of God is so much here right now. The presence of God is here right now. Why don't you tell him that you need him? Lord, we need you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We just want to share the word of God for some few minutes. Spirit divine, have your way. Speak to us. Speak to us, speak to our situations in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord is here, my brothers and sisters, and I want us to key into that. His presence brings about miracles. His presence births miracles. His presence births wonders. And I know that by virtue of his presence here right now, miracles are going to happen. I am positioned to receive from the Lord. I don't know about you. So before we continue with our worship session, just want to quickly share the word of God together briefly. And the topic I have is, the Lord, I need a miracle. It may be a family. You can say, Lord, we need a miracle. It can be an individual Say, Lord, I need a miracle. So quickly, what do we mean by miracle? We're just going to quickly go through this together. I want us to just be expectant tonight. The Lord is here already and he's going to do his wonders. I'm expectant and I'm going to receive from the Lord and position myself. So I will advise you to do the same. So what is miracle? Miracle is defined as an extraordinary and welcome event that is not explicable by natural or scientific laws. And so it's therefore attributed to a divine agency, meaning that it's something that cannot be explained by natural understanding or by scientific laws. It defies every natural and scientific laws. So it's there, as a result of this, it's now attributed to a divine agency. So quickly, let's read the scripture together. Open your Bibles and join me to John chapter 6. I'm going to quickly read from verses 1 to 15. John chapter 6 from verses 1 to 15. It reads, After this, Jesus crossed over to the far side of the Sea of Galilee, also known as the Sea of Tiberias. A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick. Then Jesus climbed a hill and sat down with his disciples around him. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. Jesus saw, soon saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him. Turning to Philip, he asked, Where can we buy bread to feed all these people? He was testing Philip, for he already knew what he was going to do. Philip replied, Even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. 
But what good is that with this huge crowd? Tell everyone to sit down, Jesus said. So they all sat down on the grassy slopes. The men alone numbered about 5,000. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and distributed them to the people. Afterward, he did the same with the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. After everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, Now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. So they picked up the pieces and filled 12 baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves. When the people saw him do this miraculous sign, they exclaimed, Surely he is the prophet we have been expecting. When Jesus saw that they were ready, okay, let me just stop at that. He said, Surely he is the prophet we have been what? Expecting. Now, quickly, I just want to bring out some points quickly because tonight, like I said, we are expectant of a miracle and I want you to be expectant. That thing that you are trusting God for that will defy natural explanation, that will defy scientific explanation. I want you to start picturing that thing right now before you because God is going to solve that problem that defies natural and scientific explanation because that is what he did here. There were a large crowd following Jesus and the Bible made us know that Jesus had, you know, he had treated them, some of them were sick, he has healed them, he has spoken the word. So at a particular time, he looked at them. In another, in another Bible passage, and in, in, Mark, uh, um, in Mark chapter 6, this same story told us that that place they were, it was a remote place. It was a place that was far from the town, and it was in the evening. So in the evening, Jesus looked and said, ah, what are we going to do to this crowd of people? He was asking Philip, what are we going to give to them to eat? Where can we buy bread to feed these people? So that was a problem at that time. Because imagine the large crowd of people. The Bible says the men were only were 5,000. And you know, that's just the men alone of 5,000 people. So you, that is a situation that you can describe as a problem. And Jesus asked Philip, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? Now, when Jesus was asking Philip, he already knows the answer, okay? He was just what testing Philip. And that's what happens to most of us. We are in need of something, okay? Something that defies natural and scientific law, just like this. And Jesus may be asking you a question too. Jesus already knows the answer. He already knows the solution. But he's just trying to test us. Just like he was trying to test Philip here. He already knows how to solve the problem. But he wanted to see what was, what would be the outcome of the words of Philip. So there are sometimes on the way to our miracle, God will intentionally test us. He already knows what is in our heart. He already knows our level of faith. And he knows what he can do. But he will just want to see what you, as his child, will say. What will be your response? Now, yes, Philip's response was a natural response. He said, uh -uh, even if we work for months, how can we get money to feed all those people? His response was not based on the revelation of who God was. Despite the fact that he has been working with Jesus for a long time, he forgot all the things that he has seen Jesus do. And he was replying based on natural senses. My dear brothers and sisters, when our tests come, in our time of need, when we are expectant of a miracle, something that we have long waited for, what will be your response when Jesus tests you? Our tests vary. You may be so sick and down, and your own test may be, Jesus will say, get up and stand up. And you're like, if I stand up, I will fall down. That could be your own test. Or perhaps you are saving up money to buy something, and you know that even if you work for months, you cannot gather that money. And Jesus says, the little that you have in your hand, give it out. That could be your own test. Another test could be that somebody may have done something so terrible to you. Okay, you are the one that has been hurt, you have been one that has been battered. And Jesus will say, forgive the person, not just forgive the person, go and do this good and this good thing to this person. That could be your own test. So our test could vary. So the question is that when we are tested, what are we going to do? Are we going to respond based on natural senses or based on our revelation of Jesus? I want us to ponder on that. So on our way to miracle, a test may come. So what will happen when you are being tested? So like I said, Philip's response was a natural response. It was not based on his revelation of God. But on the other hand, another person came forward. 
and that was Andrew. What did Andrew do? In verse 8, the Bible says, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. He said, ah, Jesus, there's a young boy here that has what? Five loaves of bread and two fishes. So on the other hand, Andrew came to Jesus with a resource, with a, fee, with a, with a seed that can be used for a miracle. Can you see that? Andrew came to Jesus with a resource, with a seed that can be used what, for a miracle. But there was something that he did. Despite the fact that he came with a resource and a seed, he still did not, he could not see the quality, he could not see the power in what he brought forward. Why did I say that? If you look at that verse 8, he said, but what good is that with this huge crowd? Can you see that? He brought a seed that Jesus could use to bring about the miracle. He brought a resource, but he could not see the good in what he brought. He said, but what good is this little thing that I brought compared to the crowd that we have to feed? That means his spiritual eyes was not open enough to see that that seed is the way to the miracle. His spiritual eyes was not open enough to see that that opportunity is the way to the miracle. What I would like to tell us is that on our way to miracle, many of us, God will give to us a seed, an opening, a resource that is an opening to the miracle you are waiting for. But so many times, we don't treat such things with great importance. You know why? Because our spiritual eyes are not open. You are expectant of a big thing, and all you are waiting for is that big thing to happen. But sometimes God will give you that little seed. That little opportunity, that little opening, that will open the bigger one. But you will, you will ignore the small thing because it's not looking like what you are expecting. So we need to be designing at this time. As we are expectant of great breakthrough, great miracle, don't overlook those little seeds. Don't overlook those little opportunities. Don't overlook those little resources that God has given to you. There are some relationships that God will place on our way. And many of us will look down on such relationship, But they are the opening to the bigger one that you are expecting. I pray that the Lord Almighty will cause us in this season, as we are expectant of our great miracles, to be designing of the resources, the opportunities that he has placed around us in the name of Jesus. So like I said, there are so many relationships opportunities, possessions that he has placed around us that looks like those five loaves and two fishes. Will you be designing and recognize those things? Will you place great importance on those things so that you will receive the bigger miracle that the Lord has for us? Hallelujah! So we move on. We thank God that despite the fact that Philip spoke back with natural responses, and not with spiritual responses when Jesus asked him, how can we feed these people? Despite the fact that Andrew came forward with a resource but could not see the importance of the resource, Jesus in his mercy overlooked all these things. And what did Jesus say? Jesus gave them a command. He said, tell the people to sit down. Tell the people to do what? To sit down. My dear brothers and sisters, there are some times in our lives, on the way to the miracle, God will give us instructions to sit down. You know why? Because he's trying to tell us, ah, at this time, my daughter, at this time, my son, no motion. You have been trying to solve this problem for yourself. And as a result of this, you have got tired. You have got weary. No motion now. Sit down and watch me do the wonder. Because you can imagine, those crowd, they have been with Jesus for a while. At that time in the evening, they would have been so tired and weary. Maybe they are so agitated as a result of hunger. We all know what hunger can do. But Jesus gave the instruction. He said, tell them to do what? To sit down. Yeah, sometimes that, that will be the instruction you receive from God. Perhaps God is even telling you that right now. He's telling that you have been trying to solve this problem. My dear daughter, my dear son, just sit down. Sit down, no motion. Sit down and sit still in my presence. Thank God for that worship we started with. Nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. I'll be here worshiping. Can I 
There are some times he will just want us to sit down and bask in his presence. Sit down and see the wonder he will do. Sit down and hear from him. Sit down and get specific instructions on what you should do. It's not all the time that we should be in emotion. A lot of us are always so much in emotion, thinking that it is our emotion that will bring the result. It's our emotion that will bring the answer to the prayer. But sometimes it is in our stillness in his presence that we get answers to the questions, that we get solutions to the problems. I pray in the name of Jesus that as the Lord instructs us to sit down, or oh, in the name of Jesus, we obey in Jesus' name. There's power in stillness. It's not at all time that we should be in motion. Hallelujah. So the last thing that happened, Jesus said, tell them to sit down and see what I'm going to do. Then what did Jesus do? The Bible said he took the bread. He broke it. And he did what? He gave thanks. He took the bread. He broke it. And he did what? He gave thanks. Oh, thanksgiving opens the door to miracles, my dear brothers and sisters. The little in your hand, give thanks with that, it will overflow. The little in your hands, give thanks for that, it will multiply. The little seed, the little opportunity, the little resource in your hands, give it, give it up to God. Give thanks, it will multiply in the name of Jesus. So in a nutshell, I don't know how many of you are expectant of a miracle tonight. I don't know. I am expectant and I'm positioned to receive from God. We are expectant and we are positioned to receive from God. In a nutshell, on our way to miracle, on our way to, uh, to, to, to the manifestation of the miracle we are trusting God for, a test can come our way. Jesus, God himself can test us. When he tests us, are you going to reply based on natural responses or by your revelation of God? We can be tested. Number two, are you going to overlook those little seeds, those resources, those opportunities that will open up the bigger miracle? Will you recognize them when God brings them your way? Or you will discard them and treat them anyhow? Relationship that God has brought your way to open bigger opportunities. You are treated anyhow, yet you are still crying to God for a miracle. But the opening to the miracle you have this day, the little seed that will bring the bring overflow, you are treated anyhow. The opportunity, the job opportunity, the leadership opportunity that will open bigger things, you are treated anyhow. I pray that will be discerned in the name of Jesus. And thirdly, when the Lord asks you and I to sit down and stop the motion, will you sit down in his presence? Because he has instructions to give to us. The instructions that will lead to the manifestation of the miracle. And lastly, ha, how is your level of thanksgiving, my brother? How is your level of thanksgiving, my sister? Thanksgiving opens the door to the miracle. I just want us to lift up our voice and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Lift up your voice and let us thank you for the word that we have received. We are positioned for a miracle tonight. We are positioned for a miracle tonight. I want us to thank God for the word he has spoken to us. There's nothing God cannot do. Just like we have read, miracle is something that defies every natural and scientific law. I want us to thank God because whatever you are trusting God for, the Lord will do in your life, in your home, in your family. Things that defy natural and scientific law. He will do in the name of Jesus. And perhaps you are listening to me right now. And you have never given your life to God. And you are wondering, how can I do this? I want to invite you to Jesus. I want you to know that he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the one that will give you joy everlasting. If you are listening to me right now and you want to do that, if you want to confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to join me to pray this prayer and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you. Please forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean with the blood of Jesus. I confess you as my personal Lord and Savior. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. Come and live in me. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. And perhaps you took that altar call. I want to encourage you to join a Bible-believing church around you where you can grow in faith so that you can know God the more. And the Lord will continue to reveal himself to you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word. We give you all the glory. We know that thanksgiving opens the door to miracles. And even as we continue, we continue in a mood of worship, in a mood of thanksgiving, expectant of the miracles that you will do in our midst tonight. Let the name of God alone be praised. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Word, what a powerful word we have heard this afternoon or this morning or this evening depending on your location so if you have received your word just raise your hands up to the heaven right now and just begin to speak in heavenly language the presence of the Lord is here he is here he is here he is here from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be alone
more time to the Lord for the miracle you can receive tonight. Oh, yeah. fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Can we shout hallelujah together? Praise the Lord. 